Hello everyone, welcome to Launch Investing. Today I wanna talk about return on capital employed and let's start by watching this video from Terry Smith where he explains return on capital employed. You're going to have to make the decision between investing in just one of two companies for your investment career. Pretty simple investment career. This is going to be 40 years long. You can either buy company A or company B. Company A makes a 20% return on capital. Company B makes a 10% return on capital. Just to save us an, a, a lot of sort of strenuous arithmetic, neither of them pays a dividend. They both invest all of their profits back into the business at the same rate of return. Okay. Who wants to own A? This is a show of hands thing. B, anybody? Anyone want B? No, good. You've all been listening. Oh, there's a man with B over there. We've got a man with B. Well done, sir. Yeah. Not even my regular straight man. Good. Uh, now, I haven't, uh, of course, as, as ever with any question I ever pose, it's always completely unfair because I haven't given you enough information to answer the question. You need to know what value you buy it and sell it at, don't you? So here's what happens with these two shares. Not unreasonably, A, the 20% returner, uh, is priced, the shares are priced at four times its book value. Whereas B, the 10% returner, is only trading at two times book value when you buy them. Okay. Who wants A? Anyone want to join this gentleman on B? Can't see any. Oh, a couple of Bs over there. Well done. Well done. Yeah, good. Okay. Still haven't got enough information. How about when you come to sell them? Okay. When you come to sell them, it's all gone horribly wrong. If you bought A on four times book, the rating's halved to two times book. And that's a bit of bad luck, isn't it, really? It happens, I suppose. B, you've done very well. It's gone from two times book to four times book. The rating has doubled in the time that you sell it. Okay, who wants A now? Who wants B now? Oh, B. There's your answer. If that was the, the portfolio the choice facing you, A, with a 20% return on capital, bought on four times book and sold on two times book would give you a share price return of 18% per annum in compound annual growth. B, with a 10% return, even though you doubled the rating on which, you, uh, on which you bought it when you sold it, would only get to a 12% annual return in terms of share price. If you are going to be a long-term investor, and I hope you will realize by now we are on your behalf, whether or not you are investing in a good company that makes high returns and can reinvest in its business at something like those high returns is the single biggest determinant of the outcome. And Charlie Munger talks about returns on capital as well. He says, quote, Over the long term, it is hard for a stock to earn much better return than the business which underlies it earns. If a business earns 6% on capital over 40 years and you hold it for that 40 years, you're not going to make much different than a 6% return, even if you originally buy it at a huge discount. Conversely, if a business earns 18% on capital over 20 or 30 years, even if you pay an expensive looking price, you will end up with a fine result. Now that quote explains why I have a position in Microsoft at a higher valuation and why I don't have a position in AT&T despite it looking so cheap. But what is return on capital employed and how is it different from return on invested capital? To find out, let's dive in. Return on capital employed is earnings before interest and taxes divided by capital employed which is total assets minus current liabilities, which is the debt the company needs to pay within the next 12 months. Whereas return on invested capital is net operating profit after tax divided by total invested capital. And the invested capital refers to the combined value of equity and debt capital raised by a firm, inclusive of capital leases. Now, both of these ratios are used to determine how effective the company is at using their capital. Higher the return, the better. The main differences are return on capital employed uses earnings before interest and tax whereas return on invested capital uses earnings after tax and return on capital employed disregards the capital that needs to be paid back within the next 12 months whereas return on invested capital doesn't. But in both cases it is important to compare the numbers within sectors. Comparing Bank of America's 6% return on capital employed to Microsoft's 32% wouldn't be fair to Bank of America. Another important thing to remember is that the return on capital employed can be affected by cyclicality. As you can see here, in 2018 where the chip sector was booming, Micron's return on capital employed was at 44%. And two years later, in 2020, 
it was 6.8%. And here we have the return on invested capital and return on capital employed of Google. Now the graphs might be distracting because one is starting from zero and the other is not, but the results are pretty similar throughout the years. In 2021, Google's return on capital employed was 28.2% and return on invested capital was 25.5%. That was a huge jump from 2020 where the numbers were 16.7% and 15.2%. And the reason is that Google made a huge jump on the net income in 2021. As you can see, their net income went from 40 billion in 2020 to 76 billion in 2021. Actually, that is mostly the reason the stock is doing poorly lately other than general macroeconomic concerns in the market. Because their comparables from last year was damn impressive. And obviously, these return on capital employed numbers reflect on the company's past performance. For example, in Meta's case, they are now throwing tens of billions of dollars on the metaverse. And that will be the thing that will affect their return on capital employed and return on invested capital in the coming years. And finally, we have Alibaba here. As you can see, in 2014, their return on capital employed was over 40%, and now it is under 10%. But we all know Alibaba is known for investing in many areas and getting high returns. So maybe they have lost their edge in the last few years or something else has been happening. And that is why these ratios are good to use but never paint the full picture. And you should always dig deeper in the companies that you are investing in. In the example of Alibaba, their competition like JD, Pinduoduo and Tencent are forcing them to lower their margins to keep their market share. And the Chinese government is forcing them to contribute to their common prosperity fund, which all lowers Alibaba's return on capital employed. So it is always important to know the situation the company is in before jumping to conclusions on the company based on their return on capital employed numbers. So that was it for today, I hope you liked it, please subscribe if you did, other than that I'll see you in the next one.